Hey everyone, it's Todd. I'm out for a, a walk. I was actually gonna go to the duck pond. I'm sorry, not the duck pond, the, the turtle pond and sit there and, and talk. But a lot of people, I think, had the same idea. So instead I'm gonna head down to the uh, tennis courts. I'm going by one of the golf course holes right now. This place is just beautiful. If you guys are ever down here, I mean, I'm gonna have you over for a drink or make you walk around with me. <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about today, what was on my mind, is something called competitive sellers. And I really, I don't think people understand exactly what a competitive seller is on Amazon, much less why Amazon needs more of them. You know, I'm gonna get squirreled on this walk a lot. I have no idea. Oh, that's a pelican. And I don't know if you can see him. He's just sitting in that tree. I love the pelicans here. I watch them all the time. They're like my squirrels, if you will. Oh, one just landed in the water. So cool. Anyway, competitive. Oh, and there's an iguana <laughs> crossing the road. He'll probably be gone by the time we get over there. But I love the iguanas too. The people here think they're like pests, pests. But I, uh, I just think they're so awesome. Anyway, he was big and really light green. I don't think he's going to be here. Anyway, competitive sellers. <laughs> oh, nope, they, oh, he saw me, went right in the water. Anyway, how cool. Okay, so here's the idea, all right? And I really want people to be able to wrap their heads around this. Because once you understand this concept, you'll, you'll do everything you can to make some time to go find some products to sell on Amazon. Amazon wants as many competitive sellers on a single product as possible. The bottom line, as far as Amazon is concerned, is that it's better overall for their customers. The products tend to stay in stock, the prices tend to be stable, and Amazon is able to move the products around or when the shipping plans are made, tell the sellers where to ship it so that logistically, they're able to have product sitting all around the country so that they can try to get their goal of one day delivery. Now, right now I understand they're having trouble with two day delivery because of the pandemic and whatnot, but you get the idea. So what's a competitive seller? Amazon considers a competitive seller, the group of sellers that can get the product to the customer in the same amount of time for pretty much the same cost. Generally, that means your products at FBA and that you're matching, not beating, matching the buy box price. So if you match the buy box price, generally the lowest FBA price, and you have your product sitting down there at FBA, you're gonna be a competitive seller. So what does that mean to you? I mean, now that you know what a competitive seller is by definition, what does it mean to you? Well, what it means is Amazon is gonna share all of the sales for that product amongst all the competitive sellers. So if that thing is selling a thousand units a month and there's 10 competitive sellers, each seller is going to get about a hundred sales a month. Okay, that is by design. That is what Amazon has determined over the last many, many years they've been doing this is the best result for the customer. Okay, so if we know that a product is already selling on Amazon, how do we become a competitive seller for it? I mean, think about it. If, you're, if you know a product's doing 100,000 units a month, wouldn't you wanna get a slice of that? Of course, and that, <laughs> therein lies the problem. A lot of the products, oh, now we're going by the tennis court, so. I just have to make sure we're not uh, disturbing anybody. Well, that's the problem. See, most of the sellers that really don't know what they're doing, okay, look for the sexy products to sell. They pull out the top 100 lists and they're like, oh, if I can find supply on one of these products on the top 100 list, because they're selling a lot, I'll sell a lot. Now, here's the fallacy there. Here's what's wrong with that argument. I think I'm gonna stand under this shade tree for, for a hot minute here. Here's what's wrong with that argument. 
you're not going to be able to find supply. <laughs> okay, number one, if it's already an Amazon top 100 seller, there's no way you're going to find a wholesaler or a brand to sell you that product at a price that's going to allow you to be a competitive seller. And this is why people scratch their heads and go, how is that guy making any money? It's, uh, let's say it's a toy from Mattel and it's the number one bestseller in toys. And you call Mattel and Mattel says, yeah, we distribute through ABC Toys. Go get an account with them. And you go to ABC Toys and say, I wanna buy this, this number one best-selling toy on Amazon. They'll, will you sell it to me? They'll say, sure. And you're like, how much? And they'll say, it's $25 a unit. And you go back to Amazon and find out it's selling for $19 <laughs> retail. <laughs> and you're like, uh, I can't make any money at $25 cost. You're exactly right. And this is why people run around going, you can't make any money on Amazon. You know, you can't find good sources for products. All the good products are taken. All false, all right? They're doing it backwards. Backwards in so many ways. So, so what's the right way to do it? If you wanna be a competitive seller, you need to find products that need competitive sellers, all right? Newsflash, <laughs> that's the big trick, all right? So how do you do that? How do you do that? The average wholesaler out there carries anywhere from five to 25,000 products. I've seen some with 150,000 different products, some with just a couple thousand. But on average, you're gonna find a wholesaler has six, 7,000 products. By definition, if you're, if you're able to open an account with that wholesaler, they are saying, I've got 6,000 products, I'll sell you. That's what they're in business for. Some people make it harder than that, and we can talk about that later. But bottom line, that's what they're in business for. All right, so now you have a list of 6,000 products. What's your job? To find out which of those 6,000 products need additional competitive sellers that are all, and those products are already selling profitably at Amazon. And I've seen, especially in the last three months, the number of products that need competitive sellers have gone through the roof. A lot of the reason for this is the pandemic, all right? So why would this cause a problem for competitive sellers? A lot of them weren't professional competitive sellers. I'm a professional competitive seller. I train people to become professional competitive sellers, which means it's not a hobby. This isn't something we're just gonna toy around with. This is something that we do full-time and make a full-time income doing, all right? The people that aren't competitive sellers got pushed right out because the suppliers were tired of selling them five of this and five of that. And you know, they just weren't great customers. The pandemic hit and all of a sudden people like me were going to them and saying, I need, you know how I normally don't order three months supply? Well, I'm selling three months right now of supply every week. I need more product. They wanna deal with me. They don't wanna deal with the guy from his kitchen table saying, yeah, can I get five of those? <laughs> no, all right. So now there's, so all of those wannabe professional competitive sellers, they're out of the game. It's too, too hard for them, too tough, okay? They didn't have great relationships, right? They weren't able to, to pivot. So instead of pivoting, you know what they did? They quit. Those people quitting has only made the opportunity better for those that want to do it professionally, have a real business and do Amazon the right way. So, so basically, so now the idea is, all right, you got this list of 6,000, you need to find which products need competitive sellers. How do you do that? Short answer, software, all right? Now, uh, Chris Keith, the amazing Chris Keith, my business partner and I have spent uh, close to two decades coming up with software to analyze inventory files. Right now, the latest iteration is Wholesale Inspector. So if you wanna go out and do this on your own, you have a relationship with distributors, they've given you supply files, and you wanna analyze them, go to wholesaleinspector.com. You analyze that file, and you'll notice that one of the data points is the uh, number of sellers and the number of competitive sellers. It even drills down further and will tell you after all costs, your profit, your share of the profit per month. 
So here's my theory on this. Here's, here's my philosophy, okay? If, if a product's only making $250 or $500 a month in profit, and that would be my share, what's wrong with getting 10 or 50 or 100 products like that? If you find stuff that's making just $1,000 a month in profit, that would be your share as for, just for, for coming on that listing as an additional competitive seller. You find 100 products like that, that's $100,000 a month in net profit. Net profit, not gross profit, not top end revenue, net profit. All right, so here's where limiting beliefs start to crop up. I start to hear people say, Todd, how am I going to get 100 products? That sounds like it's going to cost a lot of money. You know what you do? You start with the first one. You start with the first one. All right, so then people do that and they come back to me and say, Todd, I've got five or 10 now that are making me good profit every month, but oh my gosh, it's a real pain to manage all of the reordering. How do you do that? <laughs> Same way you found the products, software, all right? You get yourself hooked up with uh, Restock Pro or SKU Vault or anything that's intelligent enough to look at ordering velocity and make ordering suggestions on a scheduled basis. The other thing that you need, the real secret to getting this done is virtual assistants. Chris and I have virtual assistants all over the world. Matter of fact, my uh, right arm right now lives in Singapore. <laughs> it's about to move to uh, the Philippines. Amazing, amazing person, all right? She does, all I have to do is say, hey, we need to uh, figure out this problem. She figures it out, all right? And, and whatever I pay her is peanuts compared to what she helps me make. People need to get outside of their box, right? They need to stop this uh, lim limiting kind of thinking, right? You're telling yourself you can't do it or this is a problem or ah, <laughs> no, no, no. I guarantee you there is a solution to every single problem. Uh, Chris and I have a good friend, Scott Needham, 60, 65 million a year, okay, on Amazon. What do you think it takes to get to that? It takes solving some problems, pivoting every now and then. And um, I hate it. I hate it when I see people quit. You don't quit, you pivot, right? Well, this software is clunky. Huh? Find another one. This VA was no good. Oh, find another one, all right? You pivot. I get hungry. My goal is to get fed. That's the goal. I want to get fed. And you know what? I feel like pizza. I want to hop in my car. If I'm in Las, at my Las Vegas house, I'm going to hop in my car and go to Giordano's because I want pizza. Now, and this is a true story, stopped at a light one time on the way to Giordano's to get this, this pizza. That was, now remember, I'm hungry and the way I was going to solve that was with pizza, right? I'm stopped at a light. And you know what, what smell came into the car? Five Guys Burgers. <laughs> I decided to pivot. I didn't quit on pizza. I pivoted for my hunger. All right? So, there's no such... I haven't seen an unsurmountable issue. All I see are people that fold when presented with the opportunity to pivot. Right? So, all right. So, what do we do about this? <laughs> Because Chris and I, we scratch our head. We just scratch our head and say, this opportunity is out there. We didn't invent this opportunity. Amazon invented it. One of the most, one of the largest companies going to be around for a long, long time because they know how to pivot. I'll, I'll guarantee you that much, right? So, so what do we do? Well, we try to solve problems. We made Wholesale Inspector, right? We, uh, we actually became a wholesale distributor ourselves, right? So we've aggregated over a million SKUs from suppliers that we've worked with over the years to be able to offer you those products from one source, right? So people were, were still, you know, they don't know what an ASIN is, right? They don't know how to add an offer to a product. Now, a lot of that, a lot of that stuff's available for free. I mean, if you really want to put in a lot of time to go on YouTube, and whatnot, you'll find that kind of information. There's nothing proprietary about that information. The real secret sauce comes into maximizing inventory turns and day on hand. Inventory days on hand, inventory turns, 
getting the VH trained, um, outsourcing, uh, being able to network with other successful Amazon sellers that are actually do it in, in a safe environment. Man, I'll tell you, <laughs> I tell people all the time, okay? Uh, never, 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 ever, under any circumstances, go into the Amazon Seller Central Seller Forums. What a toxic swamp that place is. I, I feel so bad for the person just starting out who goes into that forum and asks an innocent question because they'll be belittled seven or eight times by people who, I guess that empowers them in some fashion, before they get an answer. And by that point, they've already quit. <laughs> they've already like, oh my gosh, this apparently wasn't for me. All right, so anyway, so, you know, Chris and I have spent a lot of years trying to solve all of these pieces, and that's why we have the Wholesale Product Mastery Program. And we encourage anybody that wants to go out and try to, to find uh, the information on YouTube or other open uh, Facebook groups to try to get the, the information that they need to be a successful Amazon seller. But we found that unless you have all of the pieces figured out, and that's supply, software, logistics, and support, then you can find all of the products that need competitive sellers that you want, and you, you won't be able to do the step one through 10, all right? So in any event, I'm gonna continue with my walk. My goal is actually to go to the marina. Um, the marina here is beautiful. The, um, I didn't think I'd like living in a resort community, but you know what, there's, there's a lot to be said for it. I thought it would be crowded and noisy. All the noise I ever hear is really coming from the parrots. <laughs> the green, I have these green parrots I love watching. The pelicans make no noise whatsoever, and the iguanas don't bother me. I think they're kind of cool. So, so yeah, so in order to get to the marina, I gotta walk past the golf course, the tennis court, the turtle ponds, the equestrian center, <laughs> the nature trail. I can't even pronounce the name of it, but it's, it's pretty awesome. And the beach, all to get to the, the marina. And so I better get going. I just wanted to pop in. This whole thing about competitive selling was on my mind. The fact that this opportunity just keeps getting better and better if you know, you know what to look for and how exactly to take advantage of it. So tomorrow's gonna be, let's call tomorrow and ask me anything day uh, here in this group. If you have specific questions, uh, put them in this group and myself or Chris will come in here and we'll ans ask, answer anything that you guys post, all right? I'm gonna get going, you guys take care, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and remember, do something every single day to move yourself towards your goals. Take care.